Hello, welcome back to another YouTube video. This is the history of SpaceX's Falcon 9 in a nutshell. Also, a real quick disclaimer. Okay, with that out of the way, SpaceX's Falcon 9 is intended to be a fully usable heavy lift launch vehicle that can support lunar exploration orbits and geostationary transfer orbit missions, as well as crew and cargo missions to the International Space Station. There have been several different versions of Falcon 9. The first version is Falcon 9 version 1.0, which first launched on June 4, 2010 at Cape Canaveral on launch pad SLC-40. Falcon 9 version 1.0 was small compared to today's Falcon 9s at 47.8 meters or 158 feet tall. Along with being smaller, it had less power at 4,940 kN or 1.1 million pounds of thrust. Falcon 9 version 1.0 had a total of 5 flights and it did its last launch on March 1, 2003. One way to tell the difference between version 1 and newer Falcon 9s, aside from the Hyde, Manning legs, and grid fins, is that the 9 Merlin 1C engines were configured in a 3x3 pattern instead of the improved circular design with 8 on the outside and a circle and 1 in the middle. You almost get the better circular design because it was easier to make the same part instead of making different middle and corner parts. The newly upgraded version 1.1 is taller at a height of 68.4 meters or 224 feet and more powerful because it got a new Merlin 1B engine with 5,880 kN or 1.3 million pounds of thrust. SpaceX's CRS-3 flight, which launched on April 18, 2004, was the first Falcon 9 to get landing legs. And most people laughed at the idea of SpaceX trying to land a rocket and thought it was a waste of time. Cirrus 5, which launched on January 10, 2005, had the first appearance of the grid fins, which helped SpaceX maneuver and slow down the rocket at supersonic speeds. This flight was also the first launch that SpaceX attempted to land the first stage on their autonomous spaceport drone ship, which didn't do so well, named Just Read the Instructions. Maybe SpaceX should have done what the drone ship's name was. Okay, well that may have been a little bit of a joke, but whatever. SpaceX continued to improve on this version of the Falcon 9 until they ended up experiencing their first in-flight failure on June 28, 2005, during the CRS-7 mission. SpaceX took a break and used this time to change to the next version of the Falcon 9 called version 1.2, or full thrust. This new version first launched on December 21st, 2005 at SLC-40 in Cape Canaveral, Florida, carrying Orbcom-2, also known as OG-2. This flight also was a flight that made history. It's that first stage coming back. back down to land at Cape Canaveral, Florida. History in the making, guys. LZ-1, the Falcon is landing. Landing operators moving to procedure 11.100, section 3 on LZ-1 BNET, recovery net. Repeat, the Falcon and driver. Falcon 9 version 1.2 was 70 meters or 230 feet tall and can produce 7,600 kilonewtons or 1.7 million pounds of thrust. After the landing, SpaceX did a teardown of the rocket to see what kind of condition the Falcon 9 was in. I'm not sure if that's actually what they did, I'm just guessing. After tearing down the recovered engines, SpaceX and NASA noticed small microfractures that occurred during the flight, leading SpaceX to improve the turbines and the turboprop that powers the engines. SpaceX also made a new and improved composite overwrap pressure vessel, or COPV, after the previous version failed on an ASMO 6 launch on September 1, 2016 while doing a static engine power test. This brings us to today, with Falcon 9 Block 5 at the same height as version 1.2 at 70 meters or 230 feet tall, but more powerful at 8,130 kN or 1.8 million pounds of thrust. Falcon 9 has done a total of 198 launches and a total of 156 landings at the time of this recording. 
Falcon 9 is also certified for the National Security Space Launch Program and NASA Launch Services Program as a Category 3. A Category 3 certified rocket can launch the most expensive, important, and complex NASA missions, which kind of makes it a big deal. Falcon 9 has also put the first four civilian people with no certified astronaut on board at all into space. And that brings us to the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, subscribe because it's free and you can always unsubscribe later. And hit the bell notification button to get notified when I upload next. Thanks for watching and goodbye.